Hello YouTube, what's up? I hope you guys are all having a great day out there wherever you might be. Uh, so, my name is Chris Robbins, I'm one of the Press Station 101 team members. And today I will be doing a solo session uh, without Braden, Carson, or Josh. And I will be taking a look at Isaac Yaido. He is a four-year senior uh, from Boston College, he plays cornerback. Uh, he is going to be attending the Senior Bowl, uh, so that should be really fun to see him there. Uh, and another thing I wanted to point out as well, while we're on the screen, is that he is six foot. Uh, senior Bowl website actually has him listed at six foot one, which is even better. Uh, a lot of the cornerbacks that seem to be cover guys generally tend to be like 5'10", 5'11", it seems like. Uh, you have like the Jair Alexanders, the Shidobe Wuziers, uh, the Duke Dawsons, those types of guys. Uh, and so for him to be 6'1", six foot, six foot wherever he falls in that area, uh, is really, really nice. So, uh, really good size there, and hopefully we see that translate on the film. Uh, so, uh, also, another thing to note here too is that he played in every game as a freshman, uh, and he also started every game as a senior started as a junior and started 79 games he played as a sophomore. Uh, so he is a three-year starter technically, uh, which is also really good to see. Uh, a lot of guys, they come to the league, they're one-year starters, uh, and they're just really not developed as prospects yet. Uh, and to have three years of you know, uh, yeah, I am uh, starting especially the school like Boston College, ACC, great competition, pretty good surrounding talent, uh, pretty good coaching staff uh, on the defensive side of the football. Uh, it's really, really good to see. So, uh, yeah, with that, let's just get right into the tape here. We're going to start off by watching him against Clemson this year. All three of these tapes are actually going to be uh, from the 2017 season. Uh, and yeah, this is back when Clemson was 3-0, they were number two team in the country. Of course, we know now they finished fourth uh, after losing to Alabama. Uh, but yeah, let's just get right into it here. You see him lined up a man at the line at the top of the screen. Uh, really nice thing to see right off the bat is playing right at the line of scrimmage, not playing too far off. Now here, he does a really nice job of bringing that screen and getting off of that block. Uh, nice job there, just keeping his guy uh, right right where he knows where he wants him. And there, same thing, he does a really good job of staying patient. Now opening up too early, you see the same thing there. Uh, winning with that inside leverage. Boom, just keeping him right where he wants him and finishing the tackle. Now there, he does play off a little bit, uh, which is particularly interesting, uh, but he does end up making a pick as a result, or getting a pick rather, as a result of that play. Uh, nice pressure there by Harold Landry, of course there's a little bit of an awkward throw there from, from Kelly Bryant, uh, but he's going to do a nice job, as you see here, he is in the curl zone, I believe, uh, and he's just going to come across toward the hash, and really use his speed and ball tracking skills uh, to make a play on the football. Now there, uh, I'm actually going to go back and show you guys this one in slow-mo, because uh, this is a pretty good combination of what I really liked about him so far this whole game. So I'm just going to break it down for you guys one play here. Now what we're going to see right off the bat is he's lined up at the line of scrimmage. As a, a fan of press teams, a fan of man coverage type cornerbacks myself, uh, I really like to see him playing him at the line. Uh, it allows him to get leverage right off the bat. It allows him to, and because of that, it will allow him to force the wide receiver to the outside, or in some cases, force the wide receiver to the inside, depending on how he wants to play a particular route. Um, also, uh, you see his stance here as well. Knees bent nicely. Backside sticking out very, very well. Uh, really nice uh, feet, feet base here. Uh, just keeping his feet approximately shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit extended, which is really nice. Uh, elbows bent, ready to press if he chooses to do so. Uh, just a really nice balanced stance here, uh, ready to attack the wide receiver. 
you know, from here, you're going to see the ball snap, and then right here, he's going to react to the wide receiver, uh, which is really nice to see. He's not going to overcommit to anything in particular, but he's going to be patient and wait for the wide receiver to kind of make his move. When he chooses to do so, you, choose, you see that little bit of a hop back, uh, which is interesting. He doesn't exactly use that, have the best back pedal. Uh, which is something that we're going to want to work on with him going forward. But you see, even here, he still has really good balance. He's still in a very good position. Uh, still has a very good stance coming out of that. And bam. Here you see the wide receiver is going to use his release. But uh, the item is going to use his outside hand from the, corner, from the quarterback. And he's going to force that uh, receiver to the outside. Uh, so what he's going to try and do here is he's, his ultimate goal is going to be to enforce that boundary and make sure that the wide receiver can't come down with any 50-50 balls or beat him back around to the inside. So, of course, this play ends up being a run play. Uh, but, again, it shows everything I really, really like about this kid. Also, another thing to watch, too, is although this is a run play, uh, he's playing this as if it's a passing play. Uh, he's doing a really nice job of keeping his eyes on the wide receiver's hips and uh, checking his route. Uh, he's trying to really find out where his wide receiver is going to go uh, and, and read and react to his receiver. Uh, which, again, is one thing that I really like about cornerbacks is that they do, the you know, item in particular, is he does a really nice job of reacting to his wide receivers. Uh, and this, in a lot of cases, prevents him from getting overly beat. Uh, some guys, they try and really attack uh, their wide receivers right off the bat, and wide receivers just release right off of them when they have an easy completion. Uh, that doesn't happen a lot with the item. In fact, I don't think that happens very much at all. And it's because he's able to do a nice job of reading his receivers and being patient uh, with the receiver. So, as you see going down the field here, he's doing a great job of staying in face. He's not expecting this ball to be thrown this early because the wide receiver isn't ready for it. Uh, but as soon as the wide receiver turns his head, we're going to see him do the same. So again, what I really like about this play is he does a great job of staying in phase and keeping himself in the best position possible to make a play on the football. Uh, whether that be to turn around and get a pass deflection, uh, make a play on maybe an interception, uh, whatever that might be, he puts himself the best position to make a given play on the ball. Here, he does the same thing. He does a really nice job of not overreacting to that wide receiver's hop. Uh, and just really patient, waiting for his receiver to declare. As soon as his receiver declares to the inside, he does a really nice job of just opening up his uh, And then, of course, he gave a little bit more separation than you'd like, but he also knows that this is a rollout. Uh, so, He's doing a really nice job here uh, of just uh, ringing his wide receiver and following him down the field. And should that ball have been thrown, that ball is getting limited rack yardage because uh, the item is going to be right there on King. Now here, for those teams who do like to play zone, he can play, or off man, he can play off as well. Uh, so we're going to get to see a little bit more of his off man and or zone technique on this particular play. Uh, it looks like it might be cover 3 from the way they're set up. Uh, with this guy going back, this guy playing the middle, third, and this guy, the uh, item here, playing the right third. Uh, but we'll see if it's officially run. Now, another thing, too, is you might not have... I'm actually going to see if I can scale this back a little bit here. Let's see too far. Right there, you're seeing him keep his eyes on the quarterback. Uh, so, what that does is it really allows him to read uh, what the quarterback is doing, read the quarterback's eyes well, and, and really try and find out uh, where the quarterback is going to throw the ball. And if the quarterback decides to hit this guy here, then he's going to be able to try and cut across the field and make a play on that guy. If the quarterback is trying to throw it to uh, the guy that he's lined up on here, uh, he's obviously going to attempt to make that play. 
that. So, or maybe the quarterback is trying to, in this case, he's running the pitch play. Uh, maybe break on the ball. Or if it's a fake and the quarterback ends up running the ball, he's going to be able to get around the block and make a play on the quarterback. In this case, as we saw, this is a pitch. Now, right here, boom, he needs to disengage. Uh, he's trying to, but he doesn't really have the uh, technique necessary. I want to see him rip move him. I want to see him break his arms. Uh, not like literally, of course, but uh, just like use his arms and, and swap that guy away. Uh, disengage on that block. There, he's trying to tackle him with the blocker. And we saw that on the first play as well. Uh, so that could be something to work on going forward. And again, just doesn't allow himself to get beat there. Uh, just does a really nice job of keeping his position, uh, staying in phase with the receiver, and, and not getting beat down the field. Of course, he does get blocked very far back here. Uh, it's not a loose to me that he got driven backwards. So we could be seeing a lack of functional strength, something to keep an eye on here as well. And again, you should see that patience. He's not overcommitting to either side on this particular play. He's just doing a really nice job of waiting for his receiver to declare before opening up either way. And again, we're seeing him lined up at the line of scrimmage very, very consistently. And yeah, we see it here again. He does get driven back. Uh, so lack of functional strength appears to be a concern. Uh, he will need to put in some time in the weight room, uh, develop a little bit more strength to be able to take on NFL wide receivers in the run support game. Uh, probably one of his biggest negatives so far. This appears to be off man, judging by that, 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 that. And yeah, uh, you see it there. He just does a really nice job of being patient waiting for the receiver to come and, and meet him on the play. And what I like about this and the way that he's set up here is at any particular time, if this receiver wants to win that inside release and slant this route, he's going to be able to jump that from his current positioning stance. Also, if the receiver wants to go around the edge here, he's already in face. And he's going to be able to make a play on any particular deep ball that Kelly Bryant might want to throw. If this is a hitch route, he's already in prime position to break and attack the football. So he's really put himself in a great position by being patient and allowing the receiver to come to him to make a play on any particular route that's thrown. Of course, this ends up being a quarterback run. Because the cover, in part, because the coverage by the item, as well as the other corners on uh, Boston College, is just so particularly well done. And then he's able to come up and be there for the tackle of me. Of course, he was already falling. Again, at the line of scrimmage, tight man coverage. And he's going to open up his hips as soon as he realizes that the outside receiver is trying to win to the outside. Well, it's going to be underneath route because he is doing such a nice job of staying tight on his wide receiver, uh, and it prevents the first down. Tight man again. Uh, and he's going to do a really nice job while staying with the receiver on the slant, should that be the passing decision by Bryant. He's still going to be able to read that RPO and make the tackle in the run game. So, what we learned from that is that he is a little bit weaker at like getting off of blocks, uh, staying with wide receivers uh, in the uh, blocking area. However, he is a willing and physically sound tackler. What we're going to see him do here on this particular thing, go slow again. Uh, we're going to this opportunity to do it. So, yeah, watch here. He's reading. This play. He's doing a really nice job of keeping his eyes on the quarterback in the backfield and attempting to see what the quarterback and the running back are going to do. Because he knows, as we're going to see, uh, as we saw the first time, that this is a run play. He's going to be the guy that's going to be the first player on this play 
It shouldn't be his responsibility to make a play on the ball carrier as he does. If this is a pass play, he needs to do a nice job of staying in man and rigging that slant route on Deion King. So right here, you're going to get a nice play by the Boston College linebacker to take on the pulling Mitch Hyatt. Uh, and this allows the item to be the fourth player here on the running back. And as he, as we alluded to just a couple seconds ago, he is going to be the guy uh, that makes the play on the ball carrier. Also, right here, uh, another thing too is he's not really caught off guard. He is in a prime position balance-wise to make this tackle. Uh, if the running back wants to shoot him to the outside, he's going to be able to make a play on the ball carrier. If he wants to cut this inside, as he tries to do here, he is still in prime position to make a play on the ball carrier. The only way that the ball carrier really has a good chance of baiting an item is, as we noticed with the item's blocking skills, he may be able to truck him due to his physical, uh, lack of physical, lack of strength, lack of functional strength here. The running back might be a more physical carrier uh, and be able to run him over. In which case, you still have this guy right here to make the play also. Uh, but as we see here, the item just does a really nice job of getting a nice hit in and then bringing him straight down to the ground. Here he starts off in bail. Uh, he's reading the quarterback on this particular So, and as we saw earlier, he's doing a nice job of just waiting for the receiver to get there. Uh, looks like it might be a zone play, by the way he's reacting. And he's already in base. I mean, he's ready to make a play on this ball. If that's a vertical route, which it looks like it is, uh, he's going to be the guy that's going to be able to make a play on the vertical route. Again, just the same stuff we've been seeing technically uh, this whole game. Just doing a really nice job of being patient uh, and waiting for the receiver to get there. Same thing here, it's just being patient. Getting that inside hand out and forcing the receiver to the outside. And forces the quarterback to throw to the other side of the field. But what I'm really trying to show you guys by just showing you all of these plays is that this is a consistent thing. I mean, this is a thing where he does the same exact stuff, technically, on every single play, it seems like. Uh, and you're going to see this here. He's on man with that receiver back here. But this ball's in the air. He does a great job of getting off of his man, reading that throw, and being able to make a ball carrier. And watch here, you're going to see him tackle him and bring him to the ground. Top of the play, he's the fourth guy in this play. Bam, right here. He does a great job of trying to avoid that block. However, you're going to see him miss the tackle. Now, he does end up falling down. Uh, but, uh, it forces the quarterback to keep the ball. So, it could have been worse, but it also could have been. Uh, a little bit better from a, a tackling standpoint as well. Nice back pedal in the zone there. And this actually is an in route. So what we're hoping to see here is we're hoping to see him and bad play. We're hoping to see him be able to break on this ball here. Uh, should that ball have been thrown to the outside? In fact, that's actually a pretty bad decision by Brian to not see that. He should be trying to hit uh, the item's dude here. But what we're going to see here is can he recover? And he does. He looks himself in a great position to tackle, gets him by the leg, and it forces the receiver down. And 
on the screen. Also, he's doing a really nice job on Deion King. He's covering the Clemson Tigers' number one receiver. Uh, so he can cover number one guys. I don't know if King is the number one at the NFL level. Uh, now here, what we're going to see here is I'm actually going to watch what he tries to do uh, when he's out of base. So here, you're going to see King attempt to double move him. He's going to break to the outside first and then break in. And next item is out of base right here. Right realizes this. And as the item is slightly being beat on this play. Uh, but from this angle, it looks like the item is doing a nice job of doing exactly what he needs to do here and keeping his arms underneath and between the receiver and the body. Uh, so his objective in this particular play is to get his arms between the body and the hands of the receiver and try and knock the, the hands away from the football uh, and force a drop. He attempts to do that nicely from a technique standpoint. He does. He's not able to do that with Deion King's strong hands on the play, so he does a nice job of just being able to bring him down and give him zero yards after the catch. Just again, very, very good job of being patient and not opening up on this play until he gives up that outside release. So he appeared to be, it was hard to say because he was off the screen, he appeared to be in his zone play right here. Uh, and it would also appear that way by the way he reacted to this play. This is what I wanted to see on that in route a couple of plays ago. Uh, him being able to break on this football and make a play. And that's exactly what he's going to do here. He's going to get a nice jarring hit, bring the guy down, wrap him up nicely, should he have held on to that. Uh, and knock that ball loose. So that is a great play on the item's part. But I really want to focus on what he's able to do here. So at this particular point, he's able to do three different things. One, should he have caught that ball, he's able to wrap him up. Two, he's able to get a nice hit here and ensure the ball loose. And three, uh, should he not be able to wrap up, well, as a, a non-fundamental tackler, if that were the case, which it isn't, as we've seen, he's able to just get a nice hit on him here. He's able to force him back, maybe allow this guy to make a play. Uh, maybe he's able to uh, just knock him down with enough force of a hit here. Uh, whatever. But he's able to do two of those things effectively. He's able to A, use his hands to be able to knock the ball out, and force the job, and B, still use his hands to be able to wrap the tight end up here. And as you can see from the way he's he's tackling him here, he has his hands around his whole body. Uh, and he's able to very technically sound. He doesn't wrap and roll like you see at Alabama, uh, but he does a really nice job of just forcing guys straight to the ground. And here we get a different look at it, and how he's able to break on this football. He's on number 8 here, which is also Deion King, and he's able to just break on this guy here and knock the ball out. And ideally, you'd like to see him roll there, just in case, uh, if, if you're in some uh, defensive schemes. Uh, but still, he brings, he does his job. He knocks the ball out and brings him to the ground. So that's still a big net positive play. If it's just something to watch, uh, maybe in run support, that you want to see him uh, wrap and roll. Now this play here, uh, you can see a little bit from the spiral, that that's actually yeah, the best ball from Bryant. Uh, and, and hopefully we get another look at this from a string on standpoint. And yeah, I thought we did. So what I'm looking for here is he's doing a really nice job of keeping his receiver close uh, down the field on the vertical route. Now right here, 
He's technically in phase to make a play on this football. If he's able to disengage uh, on that blocker where he's currently at, he can make a play on that football with his hands. From a technique standpoint here, the wide receiver is actually going to be able to get a little bit of separation here. And the yeah, item is actually not going to jump for this, which is part of the reason why uh, he actually loses face here. Now, out of face, as we mentioned earlier on the, uh, I believe it was a, a slant play, uh, we're going to want to see him use his hand here and then undercut this receiver and get between the receiver's body and the receiver's hands to try and separate the football. And that's exactly what he does here. You see the, the corner, the item, do a really nice job of getting his hand at the receiver's chest and hopefully tries to knock that ball out here. Uh, which you see him do with his left hand. Now ideally he's not trying to wrap here. It looks like he's actually going for the tackle. I would have liked to have seen him just get his hands out a little bit more and try and create that uh, create that incompletion and get that deflection but he does a really nice job of forcing him to the ground uh, but yeah that's something that a uh, very very picky detail uh, as he does do a nice job of getting his hands where they need to be but ideally you try and knock that ball out uh, and, and go for the receiver's hands and play the football and not the receiver On the other hand, nice catch by Deion King to come down with that 50-50 situation and a nice play by the corner. Going to give up that inside leverage here, so he's obviously going to play the- Oh, that's a big block by King. And right here, boom, boom, right here. He needs to be able to get off this block. I'm going to allude to the fact that he doesn't, uh, but he needs to do something here. He needs to be able to undercut that block a couple of seconds earlier here. Like right here. If he was able to undercut this block and make a play, fine. He's able to make the play. If he's able to get around this block here and get a, a nice pursuit angle, so be it. At least you're able to stop running back. However, he's late in shooting that block. And he doesn't have the initial uh, first step uh, to be able to catch up to the running back. And that's the running back is long gone. It's an easy touchdown. Uh, so that is probably his biggest negative that we've seen so far. is his ability to block shed, uh, read blocks, get off the blocks, uh, run support, all that good stuff. Uh, that's easily his biggest negative. Now here, he's gonna, uh, unfortunately the scoreboard is in the way on this particular look, but he's going to shop of realizing that this is a fade route. Now if this is a slant route, he right here is in prime position to drive on this ball. Same thing with the, it, with, if it is an in route. Uh, he is able to drive on this ball and make a play. Now if that's a run play, his job is going to be just to occupy the block and then hope someone else is able to make a play. Uh, for him it's not, and yeah, it'd be nice if it wasn't in the way, so I can break that down a little bit better for you guys, but right here is the first look we get, and he's technically out of phase on this play. The receiver has the inside leverage from inside ball, so if that ball is thrown back shoulder, the item is very clearly out of phase here. Uh, however, it's not the best throw from Bryant. Uh, this allows the item to adjust here put himself in phase, and thus allow him to get his hand and deflect that ball very nicely. And get a key in completion in the red zone. So watch here, perfect look, perfect look. See, he's doing a great job of keeping his head up and reading that ball. A lot of young players, especially at the cornerback position, notably of course, uh, don't turn their head around and look for the ball in this situation. They're worried about the receiver. Now, the item is experience that we alluded to at the very beginning of the video, three-year starter, senior, uh, 
great technique defensively from being at Boston College, a good defensive school. He knows that his ability here is to not take this penalty and don't want pass interference in the red zone. And his goal is to either intercept this ball or deflect this ball without taking a penalty. So to do any of those things, any of the three of them, you need to have your head turned and looking for the football. Ball tracking. Big time skill needed to play cornerback if I delete the NFL level. Now also, he's doing a nice job hand usage here of keeping his arms uh, tight with the receiver. He has his hand in a good position here uh, on the outside to be able to make a play on his ball and play the receiver's uh, back shoulder. Now, another thing, too, is this also allows the receiver to only get one hand on the football. And also, with that same token, it still allows the item to have the free hand on the right side, on the inside. Because he has that free hand on the inside, he's able to stay in phase at this particular point. Now, he does a nice job here of mashing but number five rather is vertical and his wingspan and his arm length allows him to get to that football first before number five and the fleshing of the football nice vertical ability there there's a couple of feet up and really just a big time right zone play there on the defensive side Now here, another thing, he's doing a really nice job of looking at the receiver's hips. He has his eyes in great position, and as we alluded to earlier, his stance here, very, very soft. Uh, really nice job of, of keeping that back line straight, but yet leaning slightly arching forward, uh, back side slightly out, knees bent, feet at a, uh, about a uh, foot width apart, or long. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm thinking of the word. Shoulder width apart, thank you. There we go. Now, one thing I will say, uh, again, just being very picky because he still does great giving himself in a position to where it doesn't really matter too much. I'd like to see his back pedal be a little bit more strength, obvious, or straight. Obviously, he's arcing out a little bit to try and win that inside leverage in that particular look. Uh, so that may be part of the reason why. Uh, but I want to see him have a little bit more of a straight back pedal uh, when lined up with the line. Like right there, you see it. He's almost like a little bit more, uh, a little bit more extended than I would like to see. I want to see a, a foot, a foot, and then he just straight back with both feet. But still, his patience of the ball allows him to still be in a good position uh, to make a play. And it doesn't seem to affirm too much from a, uh, from a positioning standpoint. So that was the Clemson game. Uh, I alluded to a lot of things I liked in that particular game already. But... Uh, just as a quick recap, I really like how he's able to play both zone and man. Uh, I really like his ability to play at the line and off man. Uh, so he's good fit for all three schemes. Now granted, he's probably not going to be a Josh Jackson in zone. Uh, he's going to be more of a man cover type of guy. Uh, but he still has the ability to read and react on his own plays. Uh, he does a great job of getting off of his receiver uh, to make a play on underneath route. Uh, and again, he's just very technically sound. Uh, does a great job of playing in and out of phase, uh, a great job of uh, playing the ball, ball tracking, uh, nice job of, of, of forcing the boundary, winning both inside and outside leverage, uh, all kinds of great stuff there. Uh, so uh, there's definitely a lot to like about what he can bring to the table, uh, even just from that game. Uh, so, Clemson, great team, all that. Obviously, we have a lot more tape on him. So let's move on to another one. Why not? Uh, let's see what he can do against Josh Jackson, 
and the Virginia Tech uh, Hokies. Start a little bit here, and I know that we're going to get another look at this from a different view, so I'm actually going to slow this down here. Whoops. Ah! Already had to do that, and... I think they might already have it in slow mode. You know what, let's just do 0.5, that should be good enough for us. He does a great job of just staying patient, allowing the receiver to win that inside route, and then just ball tracking. He's able to get off the receiver and make that interception. Force that interception rather. Can make a guy or two miss too. I don't think he's a returner, mind you, but he can get a couple yards in your turn if he can too. Now, watch right here. The reason that they're showing us this angle is because the defensive end here actually deflects this ball with his right hand. And that's partially what makes this interception by the item uh, really stand out, is that despite that ball being deflected, he's doing a great job of checking that ball and realizing that that's deflected. And he's still putting himself in a prime position to read that ball and where it's going. Uh, so he's able to do a really nice job of checking that football uh, and still being able to make a play on it despite that pass being deflected uh, and adjusting his pass to the football. Rollout play was playing way off. And misses the tackle. Oh well. I mean, there's not really that much you can do about that. That was just a really good play by Jackson. And he does a great job here of uh, his T step. He very. Oh, I didn't go back far enough here. Uh, now what we're going to want to watch here is how he explodes off of that bear. Bear just jumps right up and he's able to drive on that ball on the slant route. Really, really nicely done there by Yayo. Again, you see that stance. Just very, very straight. Very, very technical, or very, very technically accurate right there. And boom! This is where patience comes into play. As our uh, screens, in particular, he does a really nice job. I'll back this up a little bit more so we can see this from the beginning of the play. Now, see, he's waiting for that receiver to try and get his leverage. However, the receiver never actually beats him to either side. And he never gives up his leverage. So, as a result, the item is able to keep his eyes on the quarterback, read the RPO. And not only that, but still be aware of the fact that this is a screen to his receiver. I don't think he actually throws a screen pass, but uh, he does a really, because of the tight coverage, but uh, uh, he's really not able to allow uh, for that quick play. And if Jackson does sort of decide to throw this screen, behind the line. The item is able to get a tackle for loss, or even better in this possible case, you might even be able to explode like we saw in that last play, and maybe even get a pick six. Uh, so, he's just in really good position here, uh, and also, he's playing behind him. So if that ball is maybe a comeback to this guy, or a hitch route to this guy, he's able to get off of his receiver here, and still make a play on the guy behind him. Now, of course, the receiver ends up going off of the screen, realizing that he has no chance. He has to move forward, move around, try and get it. But he's just not able to because the item is so technically sound in coverage. Same thing there. Perfect stance. Active feet at the line. Now, here, again, we see this uh, commonly also. 
he cannot avoid pick plays. Now, some of you guys might not think of that as a, a big weakness, and obviously some of you guys think that it might be cheese play, uh, that type of thing. But uh, still, uh, I kind of want him to see, in this particular instance, if he can undercut that, that receiver that's trying to pick here. But instead, he kind of just brings right into one. So he needs to do a better job of taking a better angle here. And next one I want to see when I allude to him not being able to get off pick plays. Is at some point, it's the corner's responsibility to take a better angle uh, on those particular instances. And there, he's the guy that actually gets picked. Obviously, using main coverage doesn't mean too much, but... Now, oh, there. That was interesting. We're going to see him right here. He's adjusting the coverage, or at least calling out a, a, a coverage or a play or a read of some kind. This is great to see from a cornerback. This is what makes guys like Darius Slay, Xavier Rhodes, Patrick Peterson, all elite at the NFL level. It's their ability to read what is going on in a play, where a play needs to be adjusted, and adjust it. Uh, so, and we see this, uh, another guy I really like to point out doing this at the college level is Jair Alexander. And that's why he's so effective at the college level and in such a big name and, and getting first round type of hype. is because he's able to adjust coverages and, and be a, a big time impact leader on his defense. Uh, so for him to have that responsibility to some degree... Uh, and be able to recognize this shows not only his football IQ, uh, but his team chemistry here, his ability to communicate, as well as be a leader on the defense, which is just a big bonus for a cornerback. Now here, he does a great job of keeping not overreacting. We mentioned this on an earlier play in the Clemson game. It's going to be this guy right here. Now here, he has the ability to either undercut this guy should he take it inside as he tries to do or if he does try to bounce that out here and try and split this gap he is a corner is fast enough to be able to, to prevent that and he is in a good enough position to help uh, as a linebacker now the linebacker again does a great job of seeing that outside and because he tries to bounce this inside he has this guy here does a great job of occupying that block to free the item up uh, and the safety does a nice job of adjusting as well, should the item have missed that tackle. He doesn't. He's able to just wrap him right up. Again, I want to see him roll a little bit if he can do well for that at the NFL level. Uh, just to completely bring him down from a technique standpoint. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. He's at least a willing tackler who can bring guys down effectively and consistently. He doesn't guys. Now here, what I like on this particular play is, I'm actually going to run that one more time. He's doing this RPO first. He knows that this is an option play. Now, bam. Here, whoops, oh crap, I didn't want to do that. Gosh, dang it. So here he's reading the option. Bam. He sees that that's a keeper right off the bat. Boom. Now, he has an option here. He can either take this outside guy here, or I mean this inside guy here, or the outside tight end here. Now, what he does is he sees this guy right here, has the potential to be able to, to knock him. Now, he also sees that this guy is responsible for him, so he's not really worried about staying in this spot. So, what this allows him to do is come up and make a play on the tight end, who clearly beats the linebackers. Now, here, he sees that this guy's the more immediate threat for the first down. So he's doing a nice job of taking this right away. Still, and reading where this guy's going. Also, as we alluded to earlier, this guy's a little bit farther off now. So he now has a little bit more responsibility to stay in the zone and make sure that this guy doesn't come over. Now, same thing. You see him go back. But these guys are now able to cover him. The linebacker is able to cover this guy coming across, which is why he ends up starting backwards because he knows that the linebacker is heavy underneath. Now, here he is. 
At some point, unfortunately, because the camera angle, we can't tell what, uh, but at some point, he was able to break off of that zone and off of that route. And now he's right here to make the play out of the carrier. Trying to force the strip there it didn't work. Kind of like to see him just push him out, but I can understand trying to force the fumble. Deflected. Just consistency. Again, you see it there. You see it there. He's he's trying to adjust some sort of coverage or make some sort of read or some sort of uh, some sort of adjustment uh, pre snap. Bam! He reads that RPO. He now knows that he's got the quarterback. He's got him. He's going to take this guy. Right. Very high awareness. Very high football IQ. And again, we see the pick place. I don't like how he just runs right into that pick. What I would like to see him do on this particular play is right here. I want to see him realize that that's a pick, and I want to see him get around that or undercut that. Almost like a screen in basketball. You either switch the screen here, or you uh, go over the screen here, or under the screen here. You need to bring that same mentality on this particular play as a corner. You need to either undercut that screen or over the over that screen, or in the very worst case scenario, switch it so that he uh, is able to take this guy and he's able to take him. On the other hand, he gets pushed out. The linebacker was expecting to stay on his man. Easy completion on pick play. So when I talk about corners and, and pick plays, that's kind of what I expect to see from them. Uh, because that's what teams are going to take advantage of. And there's plenty of teams at the NFL level that run pick plays. You see it with the Patriots, the Lions, the Steelers, the Seahawks, the Saints. They all have some variant of, of pick play at the NFL level. Yeah. This shall be just seeing in base with that receiver. There's a nice show in that line that leverage to be, to be uh, let go of. Bam. Forces on the inside. Stays in face. Set. Screenplay here just really needs to get off of that block. Now, there he doesn't get a shove getting off the block. He also puts himself in a great shot to seal that edge, that force. Nice back pedal there and off man. You just get off of that block. Get off of that block. Okay, there he was kind of being held. He was still able to bring him down, so I can't fault him on that play. So we listen to inside arm to try to force him out. And there you go, there was this Virginia Tech tape. So, uh, yeah guys, I mean, that's just a, a uh, full view on Isaac E. Uh, 
for those of you guys wanting to watch more, there is an Iowa game here as well. Uh, and uh, we might end up breaking that down and, and discussing him uh, after the Senior Bowl as well. But uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick, well, not really quick, uh, look at uh, what this kid can do. Uh, and what we hope to see from him at the Senior Bowl. Uh, it's going to have some, some pretty difficult matchups. I believe Miller is there, Lazard is there, or Michael Gallup is there. So there's going to be quite a few talented receivers that we're going to be able to see him go up against. Uh, and of course, that that's not even including these guys. I mean, Clemson has Gian King, uh, Virginia Tech, I believe, has Kim Phillips, I think is his name. Uh, so he's already gone up against some pretty solid receivers. Uh, but it'll be really interesting to see what he does with NFL coaching. Uh, going up against the best of the best, and and really just uh, getting to see another glimpse of him uh, in, in a different jersey, in a different scheme, and, and yeah, being utilized a little bit differently. So, uh, but yeah, guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this solo film breakdown of Isaac Idol of Boston College, and uh, yeah, feel free to check us out for more. Uh, we already have a McGlinchey video up. Uh, and I'm sure that there's going to be other videos up by the time that this actually goes live. Uh, so, definitely uh, feel free to check out our other content as well. Uh, and also be sure to follow us on Facebook, or like follow us on Twitter, Instagram, like us on Facebook. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, for more. Give us a thumbs up, comment, uh, share the video with all your friends, all your Jack Bugs that you like to watch tape with, and all that good stuff. Uh, so for now, uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed, learned a thing or two uh, about your items, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks again, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, peace out.